what might go down as the greatest anime of 2019 and one of the greatest shonen anime adaptations of all time, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba just wrapped up its 26th episode and it was an insane ride. This anime, I felt as though, man. It just did so freaking much for the shonen genre, for the fandom, and all around. Boy, we got some stuff to talk about. So let's talk about it, shall we? Whether Facebook, Twitter, or the two, make sure to steer clear, cause I'm coming through like... So Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba, wow. Now, when I very first heard that Studio Ufotable was going to be adapting this series from the manga, I want to say it was around like 2018, right around the time Volume 1 of the manga came over here to North America, I was very, very hyped and hopeful for this series because not only did I already know from my very first video talking about it that, yo, this might be a huge smash hit based on the first volume of the manga because like you can kind of tell when something is gonna pop sometimes obviously it gets axed early but Demon Slayer when I read that first volume I was like yo and I, I keep saying it in almost every video but it's the truth it gives me Claymore meets Hunter Hunter with more comedic aspects all mixed and blended in to make this recipe known as Demon Slayer and I just remember thinking like oh you foldable this is the same studio that brought forth Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works Fate Zero and the Heaven's feel films that they're doing in theaters and uh how can you do it wrong and boy am i glad that i had a lot of faith and trust in them because from episode one even when we got teasers it was like a couple months before the anime came out and we had like three to five minutes of animation that they already put out which means that they were in pre-production for a long time with this one they didn't just like slap this bad boy together they were working on this now very very brief synopsis for people that have no idea what demon slayer is young kid tanjiro his family slaughtered his sister nezuko turned into demon goes on a journey to basically try and attempt to turn her back into a human meets a dude urokodaki uh urokodaki trains him into basically becoming a demon slayer and ultimately after he goes into this thing called final selection becomes a demon slayer goes on journeys and a lot of crazy insanity happens so now that we're caught up no seriously though like oh man from episode one of course you know immediately it starts off this is tragic you know what i'm saying and if you start off something with tragedy usually at the very least you, you have the shock value in place but the thing about demon slayer is not only does it give you shock value but it gives you quality content on top of that like it's one thing to just add in shock value or just tragedy just to get you excited and then go down a very dull or boring or sloppy uninspired route but demon slayer the the narrative is so strong from the source material in the manga that it just keeps you grasped and enthralled even through the training stuff with Uro Kodaki like I, I've never thought in my life that I would be that excited and that interested in somebody trying to slash a freaking boulder and I love how Tanjiro's progression feels natural like honestly in 26 episodes it feels like the series is just beginning which right here thankfully we got the announcement of the movie the infinite train arc so they're, they're, they're continuing the story but this has to have a season two hands down there's no way that it could end like this because for starters throughout the 26 episodes we haven't seen Uro Kodaki since the very beginning of the series it would be nice to get more of Uro Kodaki he was in the beginning of the story really didn't get to see him uh Muzen oh man that final episode where we get to see Muzen really letting loose it felt as though almost uh, the final episode was a teaser for everything to come and again going back to Tanjiro's development like it, it, he feels like he's still a Ganin if we're comparing it to something like Naruto in terms of like he's still a lower rank when we get introduced to the Hashira later on down the road in the series you just see the massive difference in a pro demon slayer and you know somebody that is just getting his feet wet so to speak because yeah prior to that Tanjiro did go on some crazy missions he fought quite a few demons but he never fought anybody on the level of one of the 12 demons that are like the main top ones and it's crazy because those 12 we find out are just the lower ranks and they're not even nowhere close to the higher ranks so it just shows you that there is so much to go in order for Tanjiro to be able to eventually at some given point possibly go up against Muzen like if he's not even close to where the Hashira are at and the Hashira probably will struggle against uh you know the 12 imagine what Tanjiro can do he can't he can't do nothing and I love how throughout everything they didn't make it too corny the the brother and sister relationship between Tanjiro really protecting Nezuko but you see seen that like he still kept that goal intact no matter what he went through whether it was early on when he was going through missions and he was trying to hide her and you know his little 
trusty knapsack or whatever. Tanjiro always through and through kept on with that in mind. That nah, this is all for my sister. I'm only doing this so that I could turn my sister eventually back into a human potentially. And it's a shame that it took so long. I mean, granted, the pacing of this anime was phenomenal. Like, <laughs> I, I would argue maybe if you want to say, okay, the last few episodes, it was just straight up strict training and it's like, damn we trained but we're not gonna get anything else until the next movie or season or whatever we get so you could argue yeah okay well it didn't end off on like a crazy high note especially when you have an episode like episode 19 that lit up the anime community i i, I feel as though demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba hands down itself as a series lit up the entirety of the community anime fans around and probably even brought in new anime fans like so many people were talking about this uh especially with episode 19 because i feel as though a lot of things were kind of building up to episode 19 if you really think about it like we had again the promise of man these crazy strong demons and if you know tanjiro ever hopes to bring his sister back to humanity he needs to face off against them and they didn't pull some bs of like which this is what a lot of other shonen, you know, get criticized for where Tanjiro, after some training and, you know, surviving final selection, he can all of a sudden go up against some of the strongest demons in the world. No, he had to get saved by one of the Hashira, one of the ones from the very beginning that we met. So I, I found that interesting and fascinating, honestly, that they don't rush character development in this one they don't rush the training and then you know the cast of characters mind you it isn't until we get to the Hashira that we start to get introduced to a wide variety of a cast it starts off pretty small and for the most part up until that point we have you know a decent selection but the characters are so strong and what I mean by that is the way they're written their personalities their quirks and everything they're really lovable and enjoyable to watch from the first time we get into Zenitsu and Zenitsu I love it I love it it's again like mixing and matching things you've seen in shonen anime like he has like that Gohan temper oh my gosh I'm gonna blow up and be the strongest in the world but then like a Usopp or a Krillin like coward behavior and even getting his backstory on you know it's all an accident like he didn't even want to do this to begin with it really just showed Zenitsu's character through and through of why we love him so much like I guess you know now that the first season is over who was MVP of the entirety of Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba was it Tanjiro with all the crazy fights he went through fighting Rui and all of these other freaking insane powerful demons or Inosuke you know I, I feel as though again with this first season we only just cracked the surface of these characters I, I feel we could still find out plenty of Inosuke and, and just kind of seeing like okay this season really hurt his pride it taught him a lesson that you know, when he went up in the forest and he was fighting all these incredibly powerful foes, that he still has a long way to go. So that macho, I am the strongest, nobody's better than me attitude had to be broken down so that he can learn, yeah, I still got a ways to go. So again, one of the things that screams out to me while I'm watching this and after I finished it is, boy, this could definitely use a season two and possibly even three because, again, I feel like we just cracked the surface of all of this. Especially the fact that we just really got introduced to the Hashira. Like, we found a little bit of Shinobu, okay, her techniques, and she was freaking boss, I'm not gonna lie, the way she took out that one chick, Rui's sister. I was like, yo, I don't ever want to get on her bad side. But, you know, we, we just got introduced to them, seeing a little bit of their capabilities, and it's like, bro, so you introduced us to this incredible powerhouse, lineup these monstrosities to the point where they were holding Tanjiro down which that right there just showed that even when they're not fighting against big powerful demons because some series suffer when you don't go up against the initial antagonist that was brought forth to you like an attack on titan when it kind of went into human versus human a lot of the interesting aspects of the series started to dwindle a bit with this one where we're even getting that you know small arc of basically Tanjiro being arrested for carrying a demon around and whatnot it's still very exciting and interesting the way like Nezuko getting basically put on the spot like is she really somebody like all of the drama and the way it's presented still carries the series over very nicely it doesn't feel like it slows down or anything like it's freaking hype and just the art and animation of this series from top to bottom nobody's gonna tell me otherwise there is not one episode that looks mildly anything less than wow breathtaking which is why again i keep saying that this might be best anime of 2019 i don't really see anything like there's a couple other contenders you know out there but demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba it lit up the community it lit up the fandoms and it's for a reason i mean 
from the battles uh, against Rui to the Hashira introduction to seeing even the final episode Muzen taking out the lower ranks of the 12 and just you know being an absolute monster I like the fact that this didn't show any vulnerability because we're in an era where a lot of villains usually when we get the in and outs of them it's like oh you know they're they're kind of not that bad or whatever, but not Muzen, baby. Which is kind of a stark contrast if you think about it to a lot of the demons that Tanjiro slayed early on and kind of throughout the series where you find out their past and usually there was something really tragic. Like pretty much all of Rui's family were basically forced into this fake family thing for Rui. Likewise with Rui, his tragic past as well. Like it gives you a nice balance of like at the end of it, even though sometimes they're brutal and nasty, these demons, like they're no joke you still kind of not necessarily feel bad for them just you really get to witness that this is a tragic situation these people that are turned into demons and ultimately become these monsters it's like you feel sorry for what ultimately happens with them and the way Tanjiro treats them in the end is also really dope because he doesn't just like don't get me wrong I'm sure there's some merciless demon slayers out there I mean again what we've seen with Shinobu how she don't really give too much of a crap about them but he actually respects them in the end and even says like a little prayer to them so I found that to be a nice difference between like you know maybe some other shonen series where they would just do it and I don't care like Tanjiro actually would feel bad and it shows that maybe throughout the you know the continuation whenever we get the next you know continuation with the movie and stuff like that that we might see Tanjiro where his character could shape because it's the interesting thing about Tanjiro is that he feels like a blank canvas I've compared him to Gon Freaks before where you don't know if he's going to snap one day and really go bonkers on somebody when they were holding him down over Nezuko he didn't care who the leader of the Hashira was right there and he didn't care to disrespect or nothing so just imagine the more he goes through the stronger he goes through when he finally just says you know what i don't care no more and it might be against Muzen, it might be against one of the higher ranks of the 12 i mean it's crazy that we only just went through one of the lower ranks of the 12 and then Muzen just wiped away all of them so i don't know if that was just like a speed up in a way because imagine how long it would have take if it took us 20 episodes 21 or two to finish off one of the lower ranks what it would take to finish off all the lower ranks and all the higher ranks so definitely it felt like a speed up but at the same time it was just to show how much of a badass Muzen is and how deserving of being the final villain he really is and I'm not gonna lie Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba hands down um probably one of the best at the very least even just as a first season uh if you compare it to a lot of other shonen battle series especially out of shonen jump almost next to none could come close to what this did with 26 episodes it gave you impeccable 10 out of 10 art in animation it gave you awesome music when you know we were seeing the backstory of Tanjiro's father and everything all that music was really freaking awesome and nice and it played perfectly to each and every scene the way the characters were built up I mean Zenitsu just started as well you know kind of training to become something more than just a scaredy cat that when he falls asleep he loses it and becomes 10 times stronger than anybody around him so you know it, it even gave you slow but really good character development that felt realistic on this what feels like very long journey but at the same time even though it feels long it feels like I'm excited to be on this long journey. Even seeing Nezuko that like, you know, when she started, you didn't know she might attack somebody, you know? And between the little spell that Udo Kodaki put on her to really just want to uh, basically protect humans. And then the one chick that she, you know, is the person that's going to potentially create the antidote to bring her back to humanity. Little by little, you've seen that the buildup was there so that it felt believable when the Hashida had her on the floor and was stabbing her that she wouldn't attack because she had development as well. Even going back to what I said earlier with Inosuke, seeing that he actually had, you know, his ego stripped down a bit from, hey, I'm this big baddie, nobody can mess with me, and it wasn't even one of the 12 that took him out, so it kind of showed him I got a long way to go. And I guess that's the biggest thing about this season. The only thing you could really say that it's not even wrong, but it's just like as it stands right now, the recording of the video is that it's incomplete. I mean, again, thank goodness we got that announcement of a movie that if imagine what they're going to do if they did this with an anime, art animation, quality, all of that, what they're going to do with that movie. But it just feels like there's so much more this could go for at least three or four more seasons because it, it was just impeccable. Honestly, like the, the main villain, the fact that we only got to see him a couple different times but he felt so fierce it gave me uh to a small degree but a, a, a reminiscent feel of somebody like the main character of monster johan lieber where it was like you heard of him you got whispers of him you've seen him here and there a couple of times 
but even without him being physically present most of the time you still felt like he's somebody to be feared and that's the same feeling i felt with moves in like tanjiro only bumped into him that one time which thankfully tanjiro didn't do anything because you know moves in would have wiped the floor with him but like you know we only seen him then and then at the very end once again to remind us this guy is no joke so of course if you haven't checked out demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba season one what are you doing watching this video go check it out but i gotta say that uh i don't really see any other series like there's one series in mind right now one that might be a contender but i think demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba is the best anime of 2019 despite that this has been an incredible year of anime but studio ufotable I've, I've been such a fan of them for so long for a reason like if you like madhouse studio ufotable is like yeah uh hold my beer fam but your real thoughts of this season of demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba favorite characters favorite moment favorite episode where do you think the story is going to go from here what are your expectations for the infinite train film uh we seen at the very end that it was set up that this guy that one of the hashira and goku is going over there it's gonna be a problem and i want to say on top of the train was that demon that had drank some of muzan's blood so you know it's gonna get real really quick in the next one and are you gonna check out the manga or are you gonna wait that's an, another big question i guess i have for a lot of people like can you wait for the film to come out because i'm imagining we won't get this film until probably like maybe summertime earliest probably even fall to winter of next year not you know early 2020 like 20 late 2020 early 21 or you can't wait and you you can't resist you're going into the manga like i'm gonna try to hold off as long as i can but this one really really just like blew me away in every possible fashion demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba go check it out but that's all i have for this one though thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoy the video drop me a like i'd greatly appreciate it and if you want more from me make sure to subscribe follow me on twitter instagram hit that bell to get all notifications and if you want to follow any of my other social media links of course in the description below i'm from that world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life boy have an awesome day Peace in. Enjoy the next ride, but I was the best ride.